Professor Vern, should I even ask what that is? Uh, how much time do you have? Uh, never mind. So, Professor Vern, did you see the Super Bowl? Uh, I didn't catch that one. You don't watch the Super Bowl? Oh, yes, Administrator, I do. I, I saw the one with uh, Joe Montana. Yeah, great game. Uh, Professor Vern, that was in 1984. Oh, how can I help you today, Administrator? Professor Vern, here at MTA, I understand that we have a machine that cuts the wheels for our trains. Can you tell me about it? Absolutely, Administrator. It's called the wheel truing machine. But first, I think we need to talk about how train wheels are designed. So, how are train wheels designed? Good question, Administrator. To start with, train wheels have a special shape. It's called the wheel profile, and it includes the running surface and flange of the wheel. You see, the wheel profile has the ideal shape to run upon the rails. Professor Vern, what's so important about the shape of the train wheels? Great question, Administrator. You see, the running surface of train wheels is shaped more like a cone instead of being flat. That shape helps them to stay on the rails instead of roll off or derail. So the cone shape of the wheels helps the train achieve an equilibrium? Actually, in this one instance, you happen to be perfectly correct. The shape of the wheels allows the train to achieve stability. Actually, I have a mock-up to demonstrate the principle. Terrific! Let's check it out. Yes! Administrator, here we have a mock-up of train tracks. And I have two wheel sets, one with flat-shaped wheels, one with cone-shaped wheels. Professor Vern, have you been playing with toys? Uh, no, Administrator. My use of toys is strictly for scientific purposes. Of course it is. A anyway, as our three independent judges will attest, observe the effect when I place the wheel set with the flat wheels on the train tracks. Well, the judges have it. Let's never design any flat surface wheels. Absolutely, Administrator. Now observe the effect when I place the wheel set with the cone-shaped wheels on the train tracks. Good job of proving why the shape of the wheel is so important. Now, where does the wheel truing machine come into the picture? Administrator, as always, your questions are right on point. You see, we need a way to maintain the shape of the train wheels. That's where the truing machine, or wheel lathe, comes into the picture. Professor Vern, I need to see the wheel truing machine in operation. Absolutely, Administrator. Let's go to the light rail maintenance shop and check it out. Excellent. Administrator, here we have a truck assembly. Now, it contains traction motors, gearboxes, brakes, and wheel sets. And here we have a wheel surface and a flange. We're going to be cutting that today on the truing machine. Administrator, I've asked light rail machinist Mr. Johnson to show us the truing machine today. That's great. Hi, Mr. Johnson. How are you today? I'm fine, Mr. Quinn. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, would you go bring the train in? Sure. Administrator, here we have the underfloor wheel truing machine. Notice the tracks leading to and from the pit. This allows us to drive the entire train or just a truck assembly over the pit for wheel truing. You see, the steel wheels experience wear due to friction as they accumulate mileage running on the steel rails. Now, the worst case example of this is called a wheel flat. Oh, come on, Professor Vern. You're not telling me that trains get flat tires. Actually, yes, they do, Administrator. You see, the metal-to-metal -metal friction grinds a flat spot into the cone-shaped surface. The truing machine is then used to cut or mill off a small amount of metal to restore the profile shape. Administrator, these are the control panels, and this is the setup station, where a skilled machinist operates the truing machine. See here, this is a cutter, and here is the bit also called a carbide, and I have one up close to show you here. Wow, so that square thing is the cutting bit? Absolutely, Administrator, it does the job. Now, this is the wheel profile cutting guide. Imagine you're having a key duplicated. The cutting guide acts as the original key, and the wheel acts as the duplicate key. So this is basically a big key duplicating machine? Great analogy, Professor Vern. Now let's see it in action. Now we see a portion of the rails are moved away so that a set of drive rollers can engage the wheel set. The hold down arms move into position 
and apply pressure to secure the wheel set during cutting. Here we see Mr. Johnson start the machine and use an instrument to take an accurate measurement of the wheels. Then he adjusts the cutting depth so that the final result will have the two wheels nearly equal in size. See here the cutter approaching the wheel. Now see the cutting begin. Notice the steel shards coming off the wheel and deposited the scrap. You can clearly distinguish the freshly cut steel. Wow, look at those shards of steel getting cut off the wheel. Yes, administrator, it's quite an operation. Now, after the machinist finishes cutting the wheel surface, the flange is cut next, then the process is repeated for every wheel that needs truing. Well, next time I get a key duplicated, I'm gonna remember this.